I'm Jen from Build Basic, and today I'm sharing our DIY garage floor transformation using Rust-Oleum's Rock Solid Marble Garage Floor Kit. Today I'll show you our prep work and the easy application of the kit, and share my secrets and lessons learned. Because our floors were previously coated, I'll also explain how we skipped the kit's etching step, typically used on bare concrete floors, and replaced it with a good cleaning and primer. But first, here's how we transformed our dingy floor into something light, bright, and easy to clean. We first started with a thorough cleaning using Rust-Oleum's cleaner and degreaser solution. We were actually pleasantly impressed with how easily the stains and dirt scrubbed off the floor. Next, we rinsed and squeegeed the floor and let it dry completely. We used a razor and duct tape to test the adhesion of our previously coated floor. Once we knew it was in good condition, we were ready to coat it with Rust-Oleum's garage and concrete floor primer. The primer came in a pouch inside the can, so we just had to mix the pouch for a minute or two and pour it into the tray. We cut in around the edges with a brush and rolled the floor with a quarter inch nap roller. The primer went on pretty thin, but we still gave it the full 48 hours to dry. Now we are ready for the garage floor kit. The kit comes with a special roller and paint tray, an etching powder, which we didn't use because of the primer, and two pouches containing different colors. First, I removed the lint from the roller by wrapping a piece of duct tape around my hand, sticky side out, and wiping the roller. Next, it was time to mix the pouches. I rolled both pouches from part A side toward part B side. This popped and released the divider inside and lets the parts mix together right inside the pouch. This means you don't need a bucket and a mixer, which makes cleanup really easy. Once both pouches were mixed, I cut the corners and poured a little of each color into the tray. This is where it becomes a two-person job. Because of our temperature, we knew we had about 45 minutes of working time. It's best to have one person cut in and the other person roll. First, I pulled a chip brush through both colors and cut in around the edges, laying a coat and then coming back to crosshatch and mix the colors. Next, we loaded the roller from the paint tray, remembering to always place the roller back in the tray in the same direction so that the colors don't mix. I started rolling and immediately realized my passes were way too long. I quickly started working in shorter passes of about 6 to 12 inches, often flipping the roller and changing direction to create the marbled effect. We worked our way out of the garage with one finishing the rolling while the other mixed the pouches from the next kit. The floors only took about a day to dry, but we waited a few days before we started to move back in. We were beyond happy with the beautiful marbled look. It's finally time for our tips and lessons learned. First, inspect and organize the kit contents ahead of time. Don't use burst or leaking pouches. And if you're working with more than one kit, avoid getting the pouches mixed up or else you might accidentally open two pouches of the same color. Working with two people is essential. Our paint was just starting to get gummy when we got to the end of each batch, so we were lucky to have worked quickly and not have waste. Get extra gloves and brushes. As soon as I started pouring paint, my gloves got sticky, and it made it difficult to work. Also, the brushes got gummy toward the end of each kit, so we were glad to have extras on hand to start fresh. Don't stretch or overroll the paint. In hindsight, the places where the finish looks the best is when I had just filled the roller and had short, sporadic passes. The places where I tried to stretch the paint or overrolled look a little bit more blended and have a mottled look versus the marbled look that we were after. Keep a box or bucket handy to hold the open pouches. This holds the pouches upright so that they don't leak or drip on the floor between refills. We hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Click over to buildbasic.com for full step-by-step -step information about this project and to rustoleum.com to check out all of their awesome garage floor kit options. Thanks for watching.